Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today we're doing our How to Play the Division series with Task Force 45 Division Tech. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content. Let's dive right in. So here we are with arguably one of the best allied divisions at this point in time. I think this division is really, really strong. doesn't have a ton of huge weaknesses, and it can perform quite well. Uh, I would say definitely the strongest of the American divisions, in my opinion. So here we are. What makes this division super good, Task Force 45? Uh, infantry, very strong, has some unique infantry that no other divisions have, and it performs really, really well. It has some really strong AA with some of the best AA pieces in the game with these 90 millimeters, a really strong artillery tab, really solid air tab, it, it, it do, and a great recon tab as well. Weaknesses being a little expensive and lacking in the support tab. There's not a whole lot of options. It, it gets the job done. It's not great. Uh, the AT tab is extremely limited. You don't have a lot of variety. You're mostly kind of confined to these M1 a, uh, M10A1 uh, tank destroyers. Uh, you get some six pounders. That's it. You really don't have any heavy AT. Uh, the other issue is some of your troops are phase locked, so you can get kind of blocked out of certain things. So you know there are, and you only have Shermans, and Shermans are great for supporting, but they're not, you know, take they're not tank tank fighting other tanks. So yeah, so I you know weaknesses of this deck they can it can struggle a bit against heavier armor if you're on the back foot. If you're on the front foot, you can use your artillery and your planes and things to kind of bomb it out. You know, that that's definitely a realistic possibility. But if you are even a little bit on the back foot, a heavy tanker, something that's placed out in the open and stays away from your infantry with bazookas, that can be really problematic. You, you really don't have a ton of answers to that sort of issue. Um, you know, and if the opponent aggressively targets your AT material, you can run out of it pretty quick. So, all right, let's dive into the actual deck with, of course, the infantry tab first. This is a very unique tab, a lot of really strong options overall here, but the one that everyone knows and, the, and what this deck is famous for is this Converted Gunners, the US version, specifically you have the UK version, they are significantly worse. Uh, you can see there are 10 points left for a reason. These guys have a Grease Gun, 13 M1 Grands, and a BAR Machine Gun, Automatic Rifle. You get 12 of them with availability of 12, 24, and 36. Kind of absurd. So you, you can literally flood the map with these guys. 25 points, it, it's not super expensive. I'll be honest, for a 15-man squad with all semi-automatic rifles and automatic, it, it does a lot. These guys are really, really strong. I'm bringing two cards in A. I'm bringing my third card in C. You get three cards in total. Uh, I generally have plenty left going into B. Uh, I'm also bringing an engineer leader in B just to try to get these pumped up. Getting them up to one vet does help. It's, it's, I mean, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it does definitely help having them no vet. No vet infantry just don't perform great, generally speaking. Then in our phase B, you have basically your engineers. So, you know, they're eight-man squads with T, uh, TNT, so what they normally are. Then you have the really powerful Nisei rifles, some of the best allied infantry in the game. Thompson, nine M1 Garands, two BARs, and a bazooka. Twelve men, they are fanatical, so they will not surrender either, which is very, very strong. And it gives you that bazooka AT capability that their infantry desperately needs. Your other options, again, are these converted UK gunners, which which are fine. I mean, they're 15-man squads for 15 points, so they are, like, they are pretty aggressively costed. I would not judge anyone for using these. They're, they're, they're solid. Uh, engineers. Engineers are what engineers are. Uh, you, you could take them over these. They're both 20 points, and technically, actually, the, the engineers are better. I don't know why I'm not using those. Get out of here. Engineers. Whoop. There we go. Should have been using these. These are better. Uh, these are good, though. I mean, having two, you know, having two cards of engineers having two cards of grenade throwing infantry is really useful so if you can work these now remember these guys are phase locked to b these guys you can bring in a or b so something to consider um you have your converted gunner leader and then you have these prakinas i i believe is how you say it. i'm taking a guess here uh these guys are just not as good as your these are like bad nisei rifles essentially like really bad nisei rifles so i would not bring these over them in any way so yeah really good infantry tab you can also their leaders also have uh, you know some variety here you can have nisei leaders with with snipers the problem is you have to bring them two stars so you get two so that's not really good these are fine 
uh, they they do have a bazooka, which makes them relatively useful. Going into the really cool recon tab, you have a lot of options here. These ammo pioneers are, you know, basically kind of like your suicide squad. You throw these in, they will die basically anytime they run up against mo other infantry, but they will often take them with them as long as you're keeping them in the woods. So for 20 points, it's often worth it. They will take out much larger squads for very little cost. Cavalry scouts, effective like they always are. These guys actually perform really quite well. Of course, sneaking around with their bazooka is awesome, and they, they can put out a lot of damage actually at closer range, so don't don't be afraid to let these guys brawl a little, but of course their main goal is to take out enemy armor. M8, Recon, and the T70, which is like a prototype Hellcat, but it has Recon. It's extremely fast at 81 kilometers per hour. Uh, radio Recon, really, really strong. 1,750 meter range, but it is paper thin. It will die in like one hit. It's very, It dies very easily, so be careful. Uh, you do have other M8 options, but they're kind of phase locked, so just be aware. Uh, that's why I'm taking this one. You could take the uh, the Stuart, but it's probably not really worth it. You don't have that many spots. You do have a sniper. I did have this in eventually, but uh, originally, but I wanted the points for something else. But snipers are snipers. I mean, I, I will always make that argument. Snipers are always very good. Tank tab. Not much to choose from. Stuarts. I mean, not Stuarts. Excuse me. M4A1 Shermans. Shermans. There is Stuarts, but I don't think you want them over the Shermans. Shermans are just better. Like, way, way better. I know they're double the price, but they're just way better. So take your Shermans, fill it up, enjoy yourself. Support tab. Not a lot of options here. I mean, you get a lot of machine gun options, but the only one that's really worth taking is the, the heavy machine gun here with your M2HB. That, that is a really good machine gun. These other ones are not, not great, really. They're very mediocre. Your M8 Scott is fine. It, I don't like it. It's the 1500 meter range limits it, and it's only 2.2 .2 damage, so it's not awesome. Uh, you can, Again, you have a second card of these if you can fit them. Uh, then you have the M4 105, which is a nice 2000 meter 105 millimeter howitzer with four damage. So this is solid. I always like to have this 2000 meter range support weapon because it really helps in those open maps where the opponent has like really good support guns. This can take it out without ever actually being in danger. And then I'm bringing two cards of supply because your artillery cannot come in with supply. So you really kind of need a lot of it. And yeah, you can't be running out. So that's why I'm bringing two, which I do not usually do. I'm usually a one supply card guy only, but in this deck, I think it's necessary, especially if you have to go long. Anti-tank, you're limited. You have bazookas, you have six pounders, you have M10A1 destroyers. That's it. And the six pounders are both phase locked to B. So I'm taking this one because I want the six and not the four. I do use them. They're not like incredible, but they do function solidly. They'll kill most medium tanks pretty efficiently. Um, so, you know, it's good, but 1500 meter range. So be aware, uh, bazookas. I, I did not take bazookas cause you, they're phase locked to B and that makes them completely redundant because your Nisei rifles have bazookas. So really you're just going to end up depending on your cavalry scouts for their bazookas in A and you're just going to have to work from there. So otherwise they're really not, I don't find them useful cause you have another card of cavalry scouts as well. And then you're just bringing an M10 A1 tank destroyers. I'm bringing them with one star because... I really don't like them. I don't find them to be extremely effective. They do not penetrate consistently with their regular AP shell, not nearly as consistently as you feel like they should be able to. They don't fire like super duper fast or anything. Their armor is pretty weak. I mean, the most things can pierce it pretty fine and pretty easily and kill them. So, and they're expensive. They're 80 points. I mean, that's more than most of the medium tanks where it's on par with the medium tanks and you get basically worse stats for the same thing. So I'm not a huge fan, but that's what you got. So you got to work with them. Anti-air, super duper strong tab here. You get Bofors. You can take, if you don't want Bofors, you can take M15s. These might be better. I just kind of took the Bofors out of habit. Maybe these are better. But you can take the Bofors and give them uh, veteran C for the same number. So if that matters to you, I wouldn't take the M16s. These are fine, but they're not great. Their range is too short. That's the problem with it. And then you get these really, really awesome M2 90 millimeter guns these overperform they are extremely powerful unfortunately in my game i don't get to use them but they are very 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 strong they will kill tanks you know they got the 2000 meter range with this deck really needs to reach out and kill tanks these are really good these are your kind of your multi-purpose really strong and they stop planes in their track so yeah enjoy these really really fun to use artillery you get a lot of options here you get a great artillery selection of ta uh, selection here for your artillery tab you do want to take these mortar half tracks because they're great 
they're the only you can't bring in these mortars in a they're locked to b so like i said the, the phase locking does create some annoying complications i'd love to just take these because you get more of them but mortars are on half tracks are fabulous so we are going to take these uh very good i mean any radio artillery is really good that you they get radio normal artillery which with normal mortars so these are really really strong and then for phase c we get the big daddy here the 203 millimeter monstrosity this thing will wipe the floor with most targets it's really really good the problem is you cannot bring it in with ammo so you have to bring in that separate ammo in the support tab so just be aware and it is of course quite expensive so yeah i mean it's very strong you'll win most artillery duels with this you could you have a second card so if you really wanted to go all out you can go you know balls to the wall and really go for it uh, I'm not doing that because I don't find I, it's not that I don't like heavy artillery I just don't find I get around to using it much you also have this normal 155 millimeter howitzer and it's a good 155 millimeter howitzer it fires pretty fast it, it's a good gun so I mean I wouldn't even count this thing out really still no ammo though which is frustrating then a really strong air tab okay very strong uh, it doesn't have a ton of variety but it is strong so you get p51s which are fine they're not amazing but they're fine they're very fast the loadout is a little weak damage wise so be careful they are bad they are bad resilience so be careful head-ons are not their friends uh if you can get the havoc in there i, I would definitely consider it i kind of wish i got this thing in here um recon planes right now are really strong so i mean if you finagle some other points somewhere maybe you could get it maybe take out a card of m10 tank destroyers lower your you know lower lower the veterancy so you get three of them to kind of make up the difference and then you can use because you have one point extra in this build so you could go like this so you go like that that and that's if you really want to keep more m10s you could just have less and that's fine too so you do that and then you hop down here and you can give yourself this or you know you can give yourself any extra of these i'm actually go recon playing what the heck so we have that like i said uh, this actually does okay shooting other planes i mean it's dangerous but it's still it, it can do it if it had to i don't suggest it but it can do it uh then you get your mitchells mitchells are very strong for 227 kilogram bombs do a lot of work i'm taking the p47d napalm this thing is awesome it will basically delete an infantry or support weapon very very good super duper fast can almost not be caught at all it can definitely shoot things down it is a fighter bomber i mean it, it's a fighter it's a very it has the highest damage output of almost any fighter so it's very very strong and then just another card of mitchell's in c to round out that beautiful air tab so this is task force 45 a lot of ways to build it but although there are definitely limits you know that phase locking can definitely make things a little tricky at times um for getting the units you want in there but overall really strong division right now definitely want to try out if you're an allied player and especially if you like you know the western allies this is definitely one of their top tier divisions right now if you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and subscribe and have a fantastic day.